and welcome. My name's Petra and I'm here today with my lovely daughter, Natasha. And we are Knit Inc. This is who we are on Instagram, at knit underscore ink, if you'd like to give us a follow. And today we are coming to you from my apartment in Boston, but we hope you are excited to journey, journey with us as we talk about our Norwegian cruise that we went on with Arne and Carlos back in March 2019. So this is coming out just about at the two year anniversary. So we've been talking about this trip since we our first Knit Inc. episode, so, and we were kept saying, oh, we should do a special Arne and Carlos episode. Well, the two, year, two year anniversary has happened is here, and we figured, let's do it. And at, a, at about a year where none of us have been able to travel, travel yeah. hopefully this um, makes you feel a little excited about when we can travel again, and can kind of fill a little bit of that void, um, yeah. finding out about uh, some part of the world that you might not have been to. Yeah, and a, f- a few people have asked us to um, talk a little bit more about our trip because, as Natasha said, we do mention it. And um, so now this is the episode where we're going to do it. And um, this was the second um, knitting ep- knitting trip that Arnie and Carlos had done up the coast of Norway. And I was aware of the first one, which was in September of 2018, I think. Yeah, that was our first one. So I think you saw that the tickets for that sold out really, really quickly. Yep. So you were on alert for when these March trip, the March trip tickets were going to go. And I think what was exciting about the time of year of going in March was that we had a pretty good chance of seeing the Northern Lights. So this was called the, um, the Northern Lights trip. And I think the one in the September was more about, um, Oh, no, that was, no, they did one in, they were doing a midsummer one too, I think, but this was a fall one. Yeah. Anyway, so you were on alert for when, when we were able sign to, ups because, for signups, yeah. And I was, at that time in 2018, I was doing a sabbatical and I was coming up to Boston one day a week and staying with Natasha and Johnny. So we had a lot of bonding time that year. And one night, late at night, I couldn't sleep and I was cruising Instagram and I came across the message that. Ani and Carlos that tickets were becoming available for their trip and so in the morning I said Natasha hey what do you think about going on this cruise and she said oh yes and it was I was going to be turning 30 when did I turn 30 2018 so you bought yes. the ticket or put the deposit down and bought the ticket from you as part of my 30th as my 30th birthday present so I didn't we didn't go until that March March of, but yeah. I was still 30 then so um So that was really exciting, and then we had something really fun to look forward to. Yes, so we had booked tickets from Boston via London to Bergen, I think. Yes, so the cruise starts in Bergen, so we needed to book a trip to Bergen, and I think it was going to be leaving on a Tuesday, and then... The cruise left on a Tuesday evening. The cruise left on a Tuesday evening, so we needed to get to Bergen for that time, and then... um, it ends, we'll go through kind of the, the map, but it ends all the way at the very tippity top of Norway, and then we would fly down, and then it was kind of up to you. To, you could book you could book flights through it, but we booked our flights separately, um, and then we flew to Oslo and back. So that's a quick overview, but so yeah. fast forward, we booked booked everything, booked our flights, yes. um, figured out all, all our knit where we were packing. Um, oh, I'll insert photos as we're talking, so... I think we had, I think I had posted a photo of all of our um, oh, yeah, hand knit sweaters in our in my suitcase that we, that we packed, and I remember I was really stressed out about putting like all of my hand knit sweaters into a suitcase, and I didn't want to check it because I was like, oh my god, these are way too precious. So I don't. That even... was our carry on bag. Yeah, we packed all our knitwear into our carry on bag, and I think we paid. We were flying with Norwegian Airlines, wasn't it? I think so. And we had to pay to check a bag, so we paid to check one bag. Right, and then we each but, had a carry-on. But we put all our knitwear into the carry-on. Yeah. And I had printed out a bunch of sweater patterns, planning on buying lots of yarn for sweater knitting for the next few years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I had come up to Boston, and our flight was on a Sunday evening, wasn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, so I think I arrived, I can't remember exactly... Anyway, we... I think I was meeting you at the airport. 
Oh, think, maybe you I didn't. I think you took yes, a train. Yes, that's right. I think you took a train up and met me at the airport. That's right. You met me at Logan Airport, and yeah. it was a Sunday late afternoon. Yeah. So, are you yeah. guys ready for some drama? So, don't worry. It ends up okay. So, we get in line. We're, like, checking in at the, you know, the counter, the kiosk, or whatever. I think we tried to do the self-check-in, and I got an alert that I had to go see the someone at the desk. So... They like look at my passport and they're like, oh, your passport expires within three months. You can't go to Norway. And I was like, what? Because it's, a sh- <laughs> it's because it's a Schengen country. It's part of the Schengen countries. In order to enter those countries, your passport has to be valid for at least six months. Yeah. So my this was in March and my passport was expiring in like May or June. And, you know, I... We travel a lot. I'd never run into this. And I, I knew, remember at the back of my head being like, oh, I know my passport expires soon. So I need, I need to get, get it renewed and totally procrastinated on it. Well, so they were like, okay, yeah, you, you can't, they're not going to let you, you can't go. We're not allowed to And I, go. my heart just froze. And uh-huh. because we were flying via London, Natasha could go to London, but she wouldn't be able to go to Norway. Right. So, and we had all these crazy things when go, going through my head because I said, Natasha has to be able to go somehow and I thought well we'll go to London then Natasha can go to the US embassy in London and get her passport renewed that was a crazy idea well we were asking advice from the air. stewardess yeah the well, guy. actually it was a, she wasn't it was a guy was, I thought it was a guy I, yes, I remember being a, a guy. being a guy okay. and um so he was like you could do that but I don't recommend it it's going to be hard to do that your best chance is to go to the um, the Boston passport office and and get like a uh, fast tracked renewal. So yeah, go first thing Monday morning. So he was like, you need to make an appointment. I call. So it's Sunday. So at this point, it's like Sunday afternoon. So I'm just like crying. Mm. Um, Natasha's crying. I'm trying to think of a solution and hugging her so, and thinking this cannot be true. This cannot be yeah, happening. And, and he was really nice. He was really nice, but he was kind of like you're screwed. But here's what you can do. So we came up with a plan. It was like, okay, I'm my. It was like, what do we do? Does mom stay? Does mom go? Or it's like, okay, mom's gonna go. I'm gonna. I'll go through the details of what I did. So I'm gonna go to the um, Boston passport office tomorrow, get my passport, and fly out Monday like the same flight Monday night and the guy was like well the same flight for tomorrow is booked but you can you so I couldn't do the exact same flight but there were other options to do a one-way trip so but he was like you're not gonna be able to book that trip until your passport's renewed so you need to get your passport renewed and then book your trip your one-way flight so I was like oh my god I have a lot to do so my mom goes crying send my mom off through the gate and I go get a taxi and I called John crying and I remember I was at this counter and I was like John the worst thing has happened and he was like oh my god are you okay he like thought one of us were severely injured or something he told me I could never call him and say the worst thing has happened ever again (laughs) so it was actually my friend's birthday and so he was like come so John had gone and met up and they were having dinner and then they were going to this axe throwing thing so, oh. which, oh yes. so I, I took that. a cab and was, um, and I, like saw John and like some of our friends and they were like, oh my, and oh wait, let me back up. So I get in the cab to leave and the guy was like, oh, how was your trip? And I was just like, <laughs> oh my God, like telling this cab driver, I was like, I couldn't go on my trip. And he was like, oh my God, what is wrong with this girl? He was like, oh my God. Yeah. You got to renew your passport. I was like, yeah, thanks buddy. I know. Um, so then I ended up going, to, had some Mexican food, and then um, threw some axes. I was actually terrible. I think there was like 15 of us, and I came in last place. You would think that I would be so angry that I could like throw some axes, but I was just so defeated and so sad. I was just like, Ugh. I'm not very good at those sports things anyways. So did that, and so then I was like, okay, I need to go get passport photos. So we do the passport photo thing. The CVS photo that was on our way home from the axe throwing was open till 11. So I go and get my passport photos taken at 11 at night after, or it was like 10.30, after crying for like four hours. I looked absolutely terrible. I remember the guy at CVS was like, uh, do you want to take another one? And we did that like three times. Like normally they're like, whatever, you look fine. He was like, you need to take a, you, you need another one. So I got my photos printed. Um, I tried booking an appointment online. I saw that the passport place didn't open until 8.30. Um, 
You filled in the form. I filled, but I printed out. I printed out the documents I needed. Luckily, I have a printer at home. Print out the documents, filled them out, got my photos, had all my information that I needed to get my passport renewed, and got my butt to the passport place at 8.30 on Monday morning, and there was already a line. I think it was only like less than 10 people. So what they do is you have to like make your case for why um, you need the, pa- need the passport. And I was like, I have, here's, here's my flight information that I'm going to be booking. This is my cruise stuff and so like I had the trip so they could expedite it so you had to like go you had to wait in line to like make your case and then they gave you a number and then you have to wait to get your num your num go to somewhere else to wait to get your number called with like a separate room um they have to like check all your documents so it was actually pretty quick I think around 10 30 is when I had like gone and they were like okay you're and they're all like with every government thing they're like we can't promise you but we're gonna do our best that you'll be able to pick this up at 4 p.m on that on that monday morning so i was like okay so that's 10 30 i was like okay so should i book my flight (laughs) and they're like we can't promise you i was like okay so i submitted everything Mm -hmm. at like 10 30 i booked my flight i think i had to book my flight right before they were submitting everything show him the confirmation number um booked a one-way flight via uh iceland Reckivik. yeah via iceland to bergen and the flight was at like five thirty, six o'clock um monday evening so i went home i think i tried to nap but i because i did not i've hardly slept sunday night and i'm sure you hardly slept too yeah i tried to nap um but i think i just kind of ate tried to eat or whatever and then i got the email or call or whatever that my passport was ready Actually, no. I I just went there at 4 o'clock. And I remember talking to a few people that were in similar positions to me with, like, some people were, there were a handful that were, like, my passport expires in three months. There was one guy that was going to South Africa with his family, and his pass, there was something wrong with his passport, so his wife and three children went to South Africa, and he was, stuck he was behind. stuck behind waiting to get his Um, there were a couple people that were like, I have a trip in four days. And I was like, I have a trip right now. Um, and I was just so annoyed because I was like, my password wasn't even expired, but I know it's these rules and regulations. So they, I got, went there at four, they called me. I had like had all my stuff from the, that I needed from the airport, went to the passport place, got my passport, went straight to the airport. And I remember when I was getting checked and I was like, I just picked this up an hour ago. And the security person was like, yeah, I don't, I don't. That's great. Good for you, lady. And I was just like, I'm going there. And so then I was so happy. I remember I went to the, um, like, one of the nicer restaurants in the airport and, like, got myself a really nice cocktail and a meal and, like, sat at the airport and, like, had my meal and cocktail. And, like, I think I FaceTimed you or something with, like, I'm going. And so that was, I was six hours ahead. So that was late Monday night. Mm Mm-hmm. So the cruise was beginning the following day on Tuesday. We could board the boat at from 4 p.m., I think. On Tuesday. Local time. Um, and then I think the ship set sail around 8 p.m. that evening. So and we, you were supposed to arrive in Bergen around 2 o'clock in the afternoon. On Tuesday. On Tuesday via Iceland. And there was this big storm happening over Norway. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. It, so, so we were worried about delays. We were worried about delays. It was pouring rain in Bergen. So I, so um, we were, a couple of things, we were really lucky that we booked that buffer day because we, we were hoping yeah. to explore Bergen on Monday. Um, so we were lucky because we were also thinking, like, will I get there in time and have to, like, catch up with the ferry? The boat. With the boat. Up further north, up for the, yeah, yeah, I, and right. like try and get on the cruise like after it already left port. So we were really lucky we had that buffer day. So what happened was when you got to Norway, there was a bus that we had to take from the airport to the town, to the town, and you had it was um, you had given me the bus information and paid for my trip. So I, you told me the bus company name. So I went to like, you know, when you get off at an airport and there's like bus company signs like of where they're leaving. So I went to that company and the the tall, really nice Scandinavian guy, my mom like gave me a brief synopsis of what he looked like. And I was like, hi, I'm Petra's daughter. He's like, okay, you're all set. I know where to take you. I had pre-bought the tickets. Yeah. yeah, Because I was going to come back to the 
airport to meet you on Tuesday afternoon. But he's when I arrived, maybe I should just talk about my my twenty four hours, <laughs> yeah. which I was in a complete daze. It should have been this joyful time together. I was on my own. I barely even remember the the journey. Um, I think I I probably had a really stiff drink once I had um, checked in, had a couple of hours layover in London, then flew to Bergen, arrived around one or two, I think. Um, I remember it was pretty quiet at the airport. And as Natasha said, the, the gentleman who was dealing with the buses, I said to him, my daughter's arriving hopefully this time tomorrow, because at hopefully. this time... I had no idea whether when I landed in Bergen, right. I had no idea whether Natasha was... had been able to get her passport or book her flight right. that w- I or anything. Done it. Yeah. And I was already deciding if she couldn't make it, I wasn't going to go on the cruise. Oh. Um, but anyway, this, this man said, oh, you don't need to come back tomorrow. Um, I'll make sure that she gets on the bus and, and, and tell her where to get off in Bergen. Um, so yeah, so I was able to prepay your bus ticket and everything. And then when I arrived in Bergen on um, a Monday afternoon, I just decided, what do you do when you're really stressed out? You go and find all the yarn stores in town. (laughs) And so that's what I did. I I scouted out, there were three, actually four yarn stores in Bergen. And I walked and went to every single one of them. So I remember on the bus, so it was pouring, pouring rain, and I'll insert some photos because we looked like drowned rats, but yeah. we were so freaking happy because <laughs> I had made it. So yeah. it was like miserable weather, but we did not care. And I remember I saw you when I, you know, when you're on the ball, tall buses and you have those massive windows. So I remember seeing you and you greeted me. You were clutching yarn. You were like, had two skeins in your hand. You're like, I found all the yarn shops. And I was like, oh my God. And I don't, I think we, so it was like two o'clock. So we had a couple hours to kill before we could get on the boat at four. But we went, I was stayed in a really nice hotel and even though it was past checkout, I had explained the story and you were able to go and ch- and shower and change right. right at the hotel. Yeah. Um, it was really a tiny, we had such a tiny room, but it was great. Um, and I had never been so happy to see you as when you got off that bus <laughs> yeah. in Bergen on Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> So I had a quick change and clip freshen up, and then I think we left some of our luggage there. I can't remember. Yeah, if we, we left our lu- no, we, no, we left our luggage because it was only about a fifteen minute walk from the hotel to the boat, where yeah. the boat was moored, docked. I'm not sure what the correct terminology yeah. is. So once you had refreshed, even though we were both really sleep deprived and just emotionally drained, we we went to two of the. Two yarn stores. Yeah, so one... The one by the railway station you talk about. I think that was the first one. Yeah, one was like in a railway station, which was so cool. Um, Yeah. And you had already gotten quite a few skeins and were just so excited. And I was like, oh my God, what sweater am I going to make? Like looking at patterns. And I remember you had printed out a bunch of Jennifer Steingast patterns. So one of the shops I went to, I bought... um, It was Hillesvarg. Hillesvarg. Hillesvarg yarn. And I bought... um, a charcoal and a light gray to make a Jennifer Steingast pattern ended up turning into I'm just gonna insert the as, as things happen so it ended up turning into my descent pullover so this is the yarn that I bought in Bergen except the mohair that I held with the gray but the gray the light gray and the charcoal are Hillesvar yarn that I bought in Bergen and then added mohair one other side note we're probably gonna butcher a lot of the nice. Norwegian names but we'll, we'll do our best um and so that so I remember the lady was really sweet. She let me log into Ravelry on their computer in the mm-hmm. shop um, to kind of get get a feel for some patterns because I I had planned on the plane to like figure out patterns I wanted to do, but I was so zonked that I didn't do any of that traveling over. So I didn't I wasn't prepared as I as prepared as I wanted to be with what I needed to purchase because I couldn't handle it on the flight. And then the other the other yarn shop, there was a lot of sandness gone yarn. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember yeah, that? Yeah. And I bought some linen actually, which I did make a, a summer linen top. And I have two and a half skeins of that left. Yeah. So we bought a little bit of yarn. Um, yeah. And Natasha will enjoy it. Will insert stories because we were we were keeping track of um, as we were buying the yarn, and she, she's made me this really nice book. 
so he is yeah i'll insert the okay, photos day so one um we took so we took some photos of as we bought yarn we added to our pile in the cruise so okay so we made it we got on the boat 4 p.m we checked in i'll insert some photos of the um ship it was kind of like art deco vibe in there with the yeah. carpet and the stairwell and everything and um i have like it was um really 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 cool quaint I guess maybe so it wasn't like when you think of a cruise ship it wasn't like the massive um Disney princess Disney cruise ships so this one only held about 400 people 400 passengers 400 passengers and um it's called the Hertigruten company yep and it's actually used as a ferry for some people to kind of travel up and down Norway so and deliveries and cars it, it takes cars so it stops pretty frequently every three or four hours including in the night time right so it's a form of travel as well so some people oh. you because of all the fjords you it makes it difficult to drive or take a train in some of these towns and getting there by boat is the most efficient so yeah there are people that go on for you know an hour trip or whatever it is to um, commute or travel or anything like that. So, um, but they also obviously have areas for bunking. So our cabin had like two little twin beds that um, want, they would like kind of flip into couches too. And um, so it was really cute. We like unpacked, squirreled all our stuff away. <clears throat> and then our name, Carlos, had a welcome reception i guess that yeah. evening and so we had a little champagne toast they gave us our mystery cowl kits did a little welcome yeah and, and we... they, in these lovely bags we got our yeah. yarn and the first clue yeah. these were the mystery knit along throughout the cruise so every few days we would think... get a little clue and it was just so much fun that yeah, we i think were there were th- three three clues i think yeah um and we met so you know we met a few people that night also we were both I remember I was such in a daze and I was like so excited but so ready to get my like first night of calm sleep so we met a few people um we met the Hawaiian girls Mimi Sue and Liz Mm -hmm. um and Shirley was setting up um ball winders because we got this yarn in in two skeins the blue and the cream so everybody was really being creative about winding up their yarn everyone was so excited to get these on their needles oh yeah. and we got the the prim needles to use oh for that's these. right they're kind of i don't have mine handy but p-r-y-m i think is the brand yeah and they are kind of like triangle shaped they're so ergon- a, ergonomic and they're i li- really like using so instead them. of being round like your typical needle um so they were really fun to use. I might actually take this off because I'm getting warm, but so this was done over the trip and um and it was fun to see the progress of everyone do it. But um we attend Arnie and Carlos had a couple design lectures throughout the throughout the journey. Yeah. And one of them they talked about the design inspiration for this and it was a wood cutting, like a traditional Norwegian wood cutting that inspired the pattern for this. Mm-hmm. Um and this was Hillsvarg yarn. I don't know if we mentioned that. So, and Natasha, you finished yours during the trip. I didn't. I I was pretty close. And oh. they gave us these cute little their own little labels to add in that we sewed in. Yeah. So that was the first night. I think I got a pretty good night's sleep. I think we just crashed. Yeah. And then the next day we went to visit the Rama Yarn Factory. Yeah. So <clears> right <throat> off the bat, we had some excitement. Um. Oh, one other thing I want to say before we get into the yarn factory. So the food on the boat was a buffet for breakfast and lunch, and then it was like a three-course meal for dinner. Mm -hmm. Um, So it was like kind of a sit-down table for dinner, and then the food um, was kind of help yourself for breakfast and lunch, and it was so good. It was incredibly delicious, the food. Incredibly delicious. The seafood was so good. Um, Yeah. For breakfast and lunch, there was always lots of smoked salmon and herring and fish the desserts were so good vegetables and salads cheese plates cheese plates oh and one other thing so my my dad's sister my auntie joanne and her husband my uncle mark had actually gone on a hertigruten cruise in january in january of 2019 so my aunt had given us a few tips um about and just kind of the lay of the land um for the trip um 
so that was kind of fun to get like a little preview from her and then and then do it too and they had gone in january and they had very little daylight actually especially the further north that they went mm-hmm. but I, yeah. yeah whereas we were getting we, we got some daylight in march but the nights were definitely still pretty long Mm -hmm. so our cruise went up the coast of Norway but you can also go back down Mm -hmm. which I would love to do that they had gone back down they had gone up and down so that's like about a two-week trip ours was I think was it five nights or six six nights I think think it was six nights six nights okay so so Tuesday we left Wednesday Mm. we went to a town called Alessand and again I'll, I'll put in a little photo here um, so we actually got off the boat and got on a bus and the bus took us, we stopped at this beautiful overlook. I think it was like an hour drive or so yeah. to the Rama yarn factory. Um, and we were so excited to check out to see how the yarn was made. So mm-hmm. they saw, we, sh- they kind of brought us through the whole process of the roving and then it gets carded on these awesome, massive machines. It goes through that, that carding process and then gets kind of laid out into these like long sheets uh, long like, sheets yeah. yeah and then fluffy sheets of roving um and they some of it they do they keep it with the, just the black yarn some of it they keep it with just the white yarn and some mm-hmm. of it they mix the black and white together to make a gray and then they spin it all um get it onto these massive skeins and then depending on the color you know the lighter ones are getting dyed um yeah. so it was so cool to see all these this massive amount of yarn and then they showed us the dye pots um they mm-hmm. also put out some rama patterns so they also brought us into um where they had had all these knitting machines yeah, and they so were actually make- knitting sweaters that they make um on these knitting color work color sweaters. work sweaters that they sell um so we saw some of that in action as well and then we went into the shop and bought basically our weight and yarn um there was some stuff that was on a great sale that we just bins of bins of phenol pt2 if you can imagine um i mean it was just like kids in a candy store wasn't Mm -hmm. it and they had these bins of um, phenol pt2 that had christmas labels on so they were selling them for two dollars a 50 gram ball oh, i right. think yeah 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 and um we were hunting through kind of like factory seconds yeah whatever, but right? it was just the label and i think i bought i i hunted through and found six or seven skeins of this color that i used to make this sweater which is a jennifer steingoss i think it's called got something coast cool yeah um so we really yeah we, we bought a lot of yarn at Rauma. Yeah. So then we got back on the bus, and so we had to then take a smaller ferry to catch up with the boat. Yeah, because it had been going up the coast. Yeah, so the boat had kept going when we got off in Allison. So then we met up with it, got back on. So that took, like, the whole day. Yeah. Um, and then in the evenings, we... It was, I think, the eighth floor, the boat had all these beautiful large windows. It was really nice. Yeah. And floor to ceiling, really panoramic windows. Yeah. And so we were able to sit up there and have, and they had some comfy seating. Mm-hmm. Um, the light wasn't super great, but I, we, I was okay for knitting because it was like kind of evening, so they kept the lights a little darker there. Yeah. Um, but it was nice to sit up there and just kind of meet people and chat. And Arne and Carlos were amazing, kind of floating through different groups and spending time with everyone to get to know each other and yeah. tell us some fun stories. Um, they talked a little bit about their cruise they had done in September. And they had also done the cruise themselves a couple times. So they talked about mm-hmm. how the cruise is different during different times of the year and the different towns they like to visit. And um, yeah, so they also had another floor that had more light. I think that was on the floor below, but it didn't have the large windows. But there was yeah. it was nice to sit there in the evening. So and we met an, a couple other mother-daughter um, group tr- doubles. I, th- I think there may have been three mother-daughters yeah. on the trip. So there were about... 60 people that were part of the Arnie and Carlos knitters and some people had brought um, friends or significant others that came for the cruise but weren't necessarily participating in the knitting activities. I'd say probably like at least maybe 45 or 50 of the knitters from from Arnie and Carlos's group were like pretty pretty fantastic awesome knitter people yeah and it was just we we did meet some wonderful people and and made some uh friendships which has been really lovely and 
Um, I could have sat on that eighth deck watching the beautiful scenery of Norway go by, knitting and enjoy and chatting with people uh, for many, many days. It was just really, really a pleasant, mm-hmm. pleasant, like, wonderful experience. Yeah. So um, other and towns we visited of no. So it was awesome. So the boatmates make stops actually during the night as well because it's delivering things um and those are the places that the places we stopped at at night are the places that when you come back down are the places you stop in during the day so usually there was one stop a day that we would stay for three hours three to three to four hours so we had enough time to get off the boat and explore that town and find the yarn store the local yarn store so we would often find like a little cafe shop or go to the yarn store i think we stopped at a yarn shop in every town so Trondheim was one of the more picturesque towns. Um, yeah. It has, um, along the river, river the... there are these beautiful, colorful buildings right along the side of the river. Um, it was really beautiful and very picturesque. And I think that's where Skandir is, is from. from. So yeah. it was fun to like kind of think of her um, while we walked through that town. And um, Tromsø was another town that we stopped in and... Um, that mm-hmm. had that beautiful bridge that we walked across, mm-hmm. and there was a cathedral that was really, really beautiful to look at as well. And we remember seeing that from the boat when we pulled in. Yeah. Um, and I we we walked over the bridge with the Hawaiian girls again. I'll insert a little photo of us walking oh, that's over right. that. And one of them had for, see that was the first time that she was seeing snow. Oh yeah, this trip. So she did a right. snow angel. I think that was Liz. I think right, I have a photo and they had all these really snow. great. Um, winter gear and at oh, the f- yeah they had the spikes the to put on your shoe crampons crampons, crampons. and we kept laughing at that name because they were called crampons and uh, the further north we went the more and more snow mm-hmm. that there was and it was just yeah beautiful and actually it wasn't super bitter cold I mean it was below freezing but, but not we were, super cold we had our woolly sweaters on and I think I yeah. would put like you know just we had our warm coats and just decked out and knit gear and we weren't we were good and but, for the most part the when the sun was out it yeah was, it was gorgeous yeah and on that on that eighth floor that had the room with the windows it had beautiful open space um where you could like stay outside and watch watch the few fields swords and the the mountainscapes go by. This, um, this coastline scenery is absolutely mm-hmm. spectacular. I took so many yeah. photos. Again, I'll insert and, some. And but... you, land is in sight the whole time. Yeah. So you've got beautiful scenery yeah, and all the, the time. So there's farmhouses. A lot of the farmhouses were mm-hmm. painted in red. Mm-hmm. And um, so they really popped on the, on the, against the snow. Yeah. And I think there was some... So I remember, I think it was... I don't remember who told me this, but the biggest part of the farmhouse is that's like the map, the bigger building between oh. the barn and the actual farmhouse. So to make the farm look bigger, that's why they painted it red. So you'd really see how big this is versus the actual house that the people live in was often white I and that kind of blends that. in. Oh, that's and I don't know if that's the case like in the U.S. too, but I remember someone telling me that on the trip. Hmm, that um, is interesting. So I remember just loving looking at the houses and... Um, a lot of the people, you know, make a living with some fishing. So a lot of these were fishing villages that we pulled into so we could see all the fishing boats. Um, yeah. So I just want to talk a little bit about the people. So there, a lot, most, a lot of the people were actually, the knitters were from America, but there was also a wonderful group of Norwegian knitters and they have, they were all friends and they worked on the oil rigs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, I, they were very very sweet and one of the hawaiian girls bought a book with gorgeous knitting patterns in and it was all in norwegian of course and one of the sweaters i just really really fell in love with and i wanted to make it and i bought some yarn for it and one of the sweet norwegian knitters sat with me and we went through the book and she helped to translate the pattern so i've got notes in this little notebook (laughs) And I'm sadly I haven't I haven't made the sweater, but it's it's um I started on the sleeve. It's an all over color work. It's really sweater. nice sweater. It's it's a, kind of a classic Norwegian sweater, or is it a yeah? And so I've got photographs of the completed sweater and some notes. Um, 
it's it will definitely be a challenge to make and the yarn i bought in one of the more northern towns and it's um sand nascan and it's a blend of 65 percent alpaca and 35 percent wool and it's very soft but with the wool it will it will have memory and um they say it will be pretty ideal for a sweater so this is a project that i have to get my head back into yeah i i mean yeah. i'll speak about my special memories um so i guess i'll talk about my sweater that i have worked on that i've abandoned so i had um i was really excited to mix a red and a gray and i had found this rainier pattern at the time my sister was living in seattle so i thought it would be really cool to kind of like in thinking of my sister being in Seattle and, and then also the Norwegian trip to this soda called the Rainier sweater. And I <laughs> made two sleeves and I, I can't remember what the issue was with one of them. I think it might be too small. It's the gauge you were having. It's like kind of like the mittens. Your gauge seems to change when yeah. you're doing color work in the round. And then I started the body, and you can see... Oh, so this is bottom-up. Yeah, you can see I how it, it gets really wide um, after the color work. So I need to figure out, like, it's like, I think it's like four or five inches at least off. So we can definitely rescue this. I think changing needle size, like going Maybe ripping down, back to where the color ripping work back is. to the color work, and... Ch using smaller needles and maybe even doing some strategic decreases yeah. but it would be a shame not to complete this because look at this gorgeous yeah. look at this gorgeous color work and this is phenol right yes um this is this is some of the yarn that and I just, natasha bought at the yarn so, factory and this is the red of the barns i was just yeah so i really it was like this deep beautiful red um so I yeah now that I see this I should finish this it's beautiful the I color was like I'll just rip it out but I've got to I don't know I can't remember why I started and a third so this sleeve is, but I have a third sleeve started well because you <laughs> one of these you didn't like one of these because of the gauge and this is right. I talked about this in episode 10 that this is the way that to, that color works sweaters are knitted you knit the body bottom up often in yeah but, and then that, and the sleeves and then you join them at, at the top that's I'll have how to, this is constructed yeah this one i'll have to yeah. try these sleeves on and figure out why i feel like because now that i'm looking at them i'm like they look completely fine you <laughs> were fixated with the color work wasn't quite right on one of them wasn't there an error in the color work pattern it's coming slowly coming right back. this one no I probably made one tiny minor mistake and was like oh it's ruined but, but now that now it's like, been sitting for a year at least at least i had done at least a sleeve and a half on the trip i remember um i don't think there's anything wrong with these sleeves i don't either <laughs> i should definitely get back and if you don't want them i'll wear them um yeah. i mean that's they look it's, about the same size and too. you've blocked them yeah you, i i thought there was a oh here this okay. color work mistake okay i think i see the mistake now here it is i'm not see how it's joined weird here oh okay I think that's the mistake because that's not an issue on this one at all. So, but that's pretty minor. We've waffled on about this trip a lot, um, but I think just to sum up. Wait, there's more things I want to talk about. Oh, okay. Um, go, go ahead then. <laughs> <laughs> um, shoot. Oh, okay. What else did I have? Um, I wanted to talk about. Oh, yeah. So the we went to the most northern yarn shop. Um, I will insert a photo. Oh, I forget what town that was in. I can never remember the name of the town, but I remember Again, the name of the lady who owns the shop, Bente, and it was a broken. Sunday, and she opened specially for us. Do you yes, remember that? Yes. And she was wearing a really beautiful knitted skirt, and I asked oh, yeah. her if I could take a photograph of it. And I bought the stuff to, um, it was like the kind of, reinforcement stretchy stuff to use uh for the to make the skirt i have that oh really i didn't yeah. even know you bought that yeah and that was kind of our last hurrah i think in terms of i bought a lot of mohair yeah. i remember mm -hmm. um which we've used between us most of it now yeah 
And then yeah. I want to say the sunsets were absolutely beautiful when oh, we were yes. on the boat too. So um, most days, even if it was, cla- I think there were, a couple, it would kind of snow, but it wasn't oh, be like right. big snowstorms. There would there'd be snow coming in and out, but we had a lot of sunshine. And um, I think the sun would set around like three or four ish. It wasn't too late. Right. Um, or too early, I mean. So we got, I think, you know, we got some good daylight at that time of year. Yeah. And when we passed through the Arctic Circle, the Hertegruten had um, champagne toast you could have. Oh, yes. So we did, we passed that. I remember it was daylight. And as we went further and further north, the, the snow and the ice just became more and more dramatic on the mm-hmm. land. And I remember we went past the Lofoten, Lofton Islands, and that's where they filmed. Or I think that is they. It was very. It was very Game of Thrones. Yes, um, it's, I just was remembering. I don't remember that. if they filmed anything there or not. So don't hold me to that. But it, it looked, looked like, like the, the wall. Seat, the wall, and the, one whole day basically we were watching the wall get closer and yeah, closer. Yeah, it looked closer. like we were getting to the ice because you from could Game of see it in the horizon. That's mm-hmm. right. It was just so spectacular and um and then there was that special fjord remember that we got there at night and they served um fish chowder oh, on yeah, 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 out yeah, yeah. on yeah. deck there was the troll the troll that's there right was the a troll, troll fjord. fjord um and, and that fish chowder was so good yes yeah, so we all went out on deck and they shone lights right because it was the middle of the n- a- it wasn't the middle of the night but i think it was like 10 or it was late it, it was, was late. late and they the boat spun 360 and they put all the lights on they put a big spotlight so you could see it and yeah. i remember auntie joanne had seen it in the daylight that's right because they were doing the south they, yeah. they re- did the return so trip. i think i looked up some photos of what that looked like in the daylight but it was cool and um just some of the other highlights you know beyond knitting um, oh we were able to see the northern lights for about 10 to 15 mm-hmm. minutes um pictures just don't do it justice no. i think we didn't get the full dramatic northern light show but we did see some green purple yes. i have one photo that i'll insert that kind of shows it um and it was just they so the way they um let you know that's happening is they make an announcement over the speakers and you can decide if you want it on in your room or not yeah. and i think i might have gone to bed and you are I, I don't it was you were in your pjs yeah. i wasn't yet yeah, yeah i think you had stayed up a little later than me and we went up and um it was kind of like it hadn't happened yet but the the captain or the people on the boat kind of knew had an idea of when it was going to show so yeah. we all went out and it was kind of fun to be with a group of people and all getting excited to see this thing together you know mm-hmm. it was really magical yeah. yes um so that was really cool that we did get to see those and that was after we had crossed the arctic circle i think you, yep. have, you that's where you have the chance to see them yeah um and so then we got into it's it's written, it looks like Kirkenes, but the last town was called Chirkenes. Chir- 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 yeah. Chir- totally saying that wrong, probably. Um, and that ended up being, that was only five miles from the Russian border when we got there. So it's all mm-hmm. the way around at the very top. And we got on a bus that then took us to the airport. And I remember they had, um, there was a strong military presence at the top there and because mm-hmm. uh, it was so close to the russian border and i remember it seems really flat it was very flat there wasn't yeah, it? yeah and i remember all the um military people their gear was like abominable snowman looking they had this huge white coats and jackets and fluffy helmet looking things and they yes. well, obviously their camouflage is white so they weren't in what i would expect with like tan camo military <laughs> gear and i remember being like wow that's crazy but it makes sense um, so then we took a bus to the airport and flew to Oslo. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and oh, I want to say, so all the like travel we did in Norway at the airports and the train stations, and the buses was just so clean and yes. organized. And I'm a very efficient person and just like appreciate order. And I just loved, loved how it wasn't chaotic at any of the train stations or anything. And everything was just so, so clean. And all the people, the Norwegian people were so nice, kind, so yeah. kind and friendly, and they spoke perfect, perfect English. English. Oh my God! Even I, we were looking for cloudberry candy for my mm. mom 
in a grocery store and the sweet guy stacking the shelves helped me find it and talk to me in perfect English. Yeah. There was something else that we were searching for, which I escaped. Um, we were me getting now, some like canned tin fish to bring back for John. I got some like our caviar. Yeah. I feel like tea. Oh, uh, maybe some cloudberry jam we got. Yeah. But anyway. Most it, of our souvenir was yarn. I mean, yarn was cheaper than wine. Yarn, every, it was no way, it yeah. was expensive really for expensive. us. Really expensive. Especially wine and eating at the restaurants. But um, the yarn was much, much cheaper. Yeah. And, and the, we didn't spend a lot of, we didn't need to spend money on restaurants because it was on, on the boat. You had yeah. to buy the wine, but the food was included. And the food was absolutely yeah. delicious. I know we said that before, but really amazing food. And so then when we got to Oslo, I remember we, for some reason, we were craving, even though we were enjoyed the food, we were craving something different. So I remember we went to a Thai restaurant. That's right, yeah. Um, when we were in Oslo. And, oh, and another thing, a lot of the towns all had a yarn shop called um, His Fluden. Who's Fluden? His Fluden, yes. So it's a chain, but they all have kind of their own little spin depending on what town you're in. So some of the towns had a really great Who's Fluden, some... And Arnie and Carlos helped us recommend uh, which ones to go to. Oh, speaking, other another yarn shop. There was a yarn shop in a grocery store. Oh, that's right. Can we talk about the His Fluden a little bit? Oh, yeah. Because so there was one in Bergen. Actually, there may have been two. But they're kind of like the national Norwegian stores. They sell mm. more than yarn. Yeah. They sell like traditional Norwegian costumes and traditional souvenirs. Norwegian souvenirs, um, things made in Norway. Yeah. So if yeah, they're they're great even for non knitters mm-hmm. when they usually and also some fabric. Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. they're really great. I the one in was it Trondheim. Trondheim was really a beautiful one. Yeah, I remember I got these cute little wooden sheep. Um, gave one oh, to Georgie. That's right. Yes, and we, I got these really nice mugs. Shoot, I should have. We should have used the mugs that was I got at a Who's student. Hmm. They were like kind of Art Deco. And we bought some really nice English painted glasses at an antique store. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, Arnie and Carlos loved checking out the secondhand shops. Yeah. Um. So they recommended some for some of the towns which ones were their favorite. Mm-hmm. And so we, it was really fun to check those out. Oh, and I got Dad um, an Olympic pin from I forget what year but it was oh that's right uh they had like all these really like olympic pins um so I got Mm -hmm. him one or two of those and yeah oh and the secondhand shops had like some beautiful hand knit you could just tell there were hand knit sweaters hand knit color work sweaters um so that was really cool and I remember the Hawaiian girls got some fun um souvenirs at the secondhand shops as well um, and we all have a little bowl that we bought that we oh, yeah. keep, I keep my stitch, stitch markers, markers and in. things in, and, so and I think it's a nice memory. Uh, Mimi got us all the really cute stitch marker. Yes. I have mine, I have mine, I was using it on my Rainier. I don't have I mine, have mine right on now. some project. But it has I a use... little Norwegian star on it. Yeah. Um... So we have a lot of special souvenirs, and it's really fun to knit with the yarn that we got there. Oh, so the grocery store yarn. This is the oh, sweater the I made for my store. grocery store yarn. Yeah. This was San Sanagas yarn. San I remember. Gone, yeah. And this has um, this is the juniper grass. June June grass. Juniper, June grass pullover. I think June grass pullover has this garter detail. I added it on the sleeves. I don't think that was part of the pattern, um, and it might be difficult to tell, but there are some. Flex of color. I don't yeah, know if you can really gray, see. Yeah, it's but it's not exactly tweedy, but it's got some... It's, like, kind of difficult bits. to see. Maybe you can see a little blue here. Um, so, yeah, this is a sweater I made from the yarn that I got at the grocery store, and it worked out to being, like, like less than $3 a skein, and I got 10 and I got 18 to make John's sweater. Um, but that's, that's the sweater. That yarn I'm actually using for my dad now, but... Um, so I'll insert, I think it was like day four, that day four must have been when we hit the grocery store yarn because that's when our pile of yarn exploded, pretty much doubled. <clears throat> it also don't... pretty much doubled when we went to the, the round yarn yeah. factory. So it just kept getting bigger and bigger. So I'm going to insert the photos of how our yarn grew. And then we also this morning took a photo of what we have left <laughs> and what, mm. and some of the projects we've made. Um, it doesn't include everything because some of the projects we've made, we've given away. Like you made a bunch of headbands and some yeah. hats. 
some of the yarn we forgot to add in, but it gives you kind of an idea. We have made a good dent, mm -hmm. um, and there's definitely still more to work through, which is perfectly fine because it makes us happy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think... Really great memories. Yeah, and we went to one more shop in Oslo, and then we flew, flew home. So I think it was like um, about an, a 10-day trip total for us but and it ended up being like you know nine because of my mishap at the beginning and um, we were hoping to meet up with some of the knitters um because natalie who lives in florida mm -hmm. has a little um studio creative studio cre creative studio. she's in pensacola florida yeah. we love spending time with shirley and her husband tim yeah um i remember it being pretty sad saying bye to everyone at the airport um, we had really bonded. Yeah. You yeah. I mean, you know, they're crafty, <clears throat> wonderful people. Like-minded people. Yeah. yeah. And we've kept in touch. Like, well, you know, Shirley's in Seattle and Anna has met up. Or Anna's no longer living in Seattle, but she had met up with Shirley. Um, and when you got I to met, visit Anna, yeah. you saw Shirley. And it would be really fun to go to Hawaii to vi visit the Hawaiian girls, too. Um, it would be... Yeah, and we were able to have lunch with Arnie and Carlos at oh, yeah. the end of November. So they, I think they were. I think it in was Boston. still 2019, right? They were coming. Yeah, it was yes, still 2019. It was no. It was end of November. It was before Thanksgiving. Yeah. They, were, they, yeah. So they were doing a um, tour. A they? tour. So we had lunch with them, and it was really fun to reminisce and mm -hmm. chat with them. And um, I think you wore that sweater you showed earlier. That's yeah. Um, yeah, and I hope. I hope that we'll be able to travel. I would definitely go to Norway again. I know you've talked about wanting to do that cruise again. Yeah, I would like to go up and back down. I think yeah. I would just really enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. It's so I'm sure we missed some stuff that we'll add, add in as we continue to record. But hopefully yeah. this gave you a little taste of what the Hertigruten cruise with Arne and Carlos was like. Oh, we should thank Gita. Gita was the travel. Oh, yes. She was on, um, she worked with Arne and Carlos to just do a lot of logistical coordination. So if we had any troubles with any travel or plans or mm -hmm. just kind of advice on the um, Hertigruten, um, just experience. Yeah, the yeah. experience and um, <clears throat> just information about Norway or the towns we were visiting. You know, mm -hmm. she was our point to person uh, yeah our resident yeah. expert for any any questions we had which was really nice i'd never been on an, like an organized trip like that where you have someone to kind of help you navigate stuff versus relying on yelp reviews <laughs> and really we didn't have to worry or think about anything mm -hmm. we just it was just pure enjoyment yeah we didn't have the to, whole trip yeah do we just had to worry about finding the yarn shop and even then they told us where to go exactly <laughs> yeah yeah so. it was Highly, yeah. I would highly, highly recommend. Yeah, it. and I liked going to the grocery stores too mm -hmm. when we were in town just to get some snacks. And it's, I love checking out grocery stores in foreign countries because you can try some fun food and um, yeah, you know, get some good chocolate. I got, obviously I came home with some good chocolate. Yeah, so so hopefully. let's hope we get through this pandemic and we can travel again and meet up. Yeah, so hello yeah. to everyone. We hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching and um, happy knitting. Happy knitting, yes. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.